one place, in one tabernacle for Jesus. In one place, in one tabernacle with Jesus. There is no other place where I I'd rather be in one place in one tabernacle with Him in one place in one tabernacle with Jesus in one place, in one tabernacle with Jesus, there is no other place where I rather be in one place. In one tabernacle with Him, I'm here because I want to be. I'm here because I choose to be. I'm here because I love to be in Your presence. I found peace here. I found joy. I want to be. I'm here because I choose to be. I'm here because I love to be in your presence. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Woo, welcome everybody. We are so excited about what God has for y'all today because there is going to be a powerful message that is going to reach somebody. I don't know who it is, but if it's you, then it's going to reach you today. That's right. My name is Shana Marie Apple. My name is Mila Nyomi Chenhansen. And we are women on the front line. Thank you. We're sharing the story uh -huh. behind the front line. The glory. Oh, the story behind <laughs> the, the glory. Behind the glory. That's it. That's yes. It. That's she it. mentioned that in our first um, oh, yeah. introduction video. Mm -hmm. She said, you have to ask what's the story behind the glory. That's and right. I said, Lord, that's the tagline. Yeah, because at first we were going to call it women on the front line, my story, my testimonies. Yes. But when she said that, I was like, Lord, that's it. <laughs> it so we're so thankful to have y'all tuning in today, um, whether you're watching on Facebook mm -hmm. or later on, if you're watching on YouTube, YouTube. Mm -hmm. on Christian Classy Confident, the channel, the YouTube channel. On Christian Classy Confident, our goal on that channel is to help you to break free from limitations and ungodly behaviors so that you and I both can live fruit-bearing lives and reach our God-ordained potential. And we can only do that with the help of God. Amen? Yes. <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about forgiveness. Yes. The power of forgiveness. The power of forgiveness. Yes. And it's going to be based on some um, your life story. Mm -hmm. And we're going to begin into your story about, you know, you growing up. Mm -hmm. There are some things that you shared in the first interview mm -hmm. or the first introduction video to this. And I have some questions for you. Ask me. <laughs> she says, I have answers. So um, hold your belts tight because we are about to pray and then we're going to get into this powerful message that God has for you. Yeah. Would you like to lead us in prayer? 
or I guess I should since you sang. <laughs> okay. Lord, we thank you, Father, for this message, God. We thank you for each and every listener. We commit them into your hands, God. We ask, Lord, that whatever you want to say today, God, that you speak it today, Lord. Whatever message you want them to take away from the moral of the story, God, let them get the full picture, the full scope of the power of forgiveness and how the simple act, although it may not be so simple, but the act of forgiveness can re release power and, and, and things into our lives, God. Because when we hold things in, it stops us from what you want to do in our lives, God. So, Lord, we thank you, Father, that every listener that is tuning in today, if they hold any unforgiveness in their heart, that today they will release it, that yeah. they will let it go, and that they will give it to you, Lord. And they, they will say, God, I can't carry this unforgiveness anymore. I can't carry this into the next dimension of where you're taking me. So, Father, we thank you, Father. For Mabel, we thank you for myself, God. We thank you for just all of our stories, God, because you have brought us through so much. And there were times where we had to forgive people. So, Lord, we thank you for the word that we're about to receive today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, thank you. So, in the beginning of our introduction series, we talked about your story. And we talked about some of the basics. Because yeah. I, I told her, don't give it all away. <laughs> yes, she did. So um, today, I want to talk about, you know, when your grandmother died. So if you all didn't watch that introduction, so the summary or a kind of synopsis of your story was your mom was pregnant with you and her and your father were having some problems. That's so right. when she gave, well, when she got even pregnant with you, she wanted to abort you. Oh, yeah. But she had a praying grandmama. I know some of y'all got that praying oh, grandmama. Grandmama was, was on fire. Interceding on behalf of her, even when she was in the womb. So glory be to God that you are here because you are such a precious treasure to the world and I just love you so much. I love you too. <laughs> Thank you. But um, so your mom wanted to abort you. That didn't happen. Mm -hmm. But when she gave birth to you, she still didn't want you. Yes. She rejected you. Yes. And so your grandmother took you in, right? I, I okay. think at the point I thought my mom was my sister. Oh, wow. Yes, because all my life was with the grandmom, so I thought yeah. that maybe my mom was my big sister or something. Wow. So I think at the age of 12 years, mm -hmm. I found out that that was my real mom. Wow. Yes. And so you found out at 12 years old that that was your real mom? That's, yes, because I was calling her sister. Wow. Yes. And at 13 years old, that yes. was when your grandmother had passed away, yes. right? Yes. Wow. Okay. So today there is a few things that we can touch on. For one, we're going to talk about rejection mm -hmm. because there are so many people in this world deal with rejection mm -hmm. from whether it be a parent that so-called didn't want them, mm -hmm. whether it be, you know, just there are so many types of rejections mm -hmm. from so many different, you know, people, places or things mm -hmm. that really have an impact on our lives. So we're going to talk about rejection and particularly, you know, the relationship with your mom. So let's start with that. Growing up, everything was my grandma. Mm -hmm. My grandma used to sell salt. Um, we have this market called, um, this is the timber market. Mm -hmm. They sell a lot of timber, so, and my grandma is a very hard working woman. Mm -hmm. I remember after school, I'll go to my grandma. I love business. Honestly speaking, I really love business. So after school, I'll be going to my grandma's place, and sometimes it was even hard for her to pay my fees. Your grandma? Yes. Not that I don't even have a. My mom was a wealthy woman that yes. then because she was selling, she had money, but she just didn't want me. Mm -hmm. So everything was my grandma. She really took care of me. But when she died, <laughs> my own family house. I was homeless. Nobody wanted me. No. I was very stubborn then. Yeah. I was I was very bad. I, I was very stubborn. <laughs> I don't listen. <laughs> I was very stubborn. You send me, I won't go. And even if I go, I won't bring the change. Mm. Because <laughs> she, like, it was a whole lot of stuff. So, so at the point, somebody would say, I want you to go and buy this from, but you get this change. And I'll come back and I'll come and tell you the money is missing. Oh. 
okay. is a lie. Right. Because if I give you the money, what am I also going to feed on? Right. Nobody wanted me when I lost my grandma. And thank be to God, I met our father. We reached to go to a life chapel international. Okay. And I was, you know, I had stature, I had shape, so mm -hmm. I didn't want to go to the Sunday school, so I always go to them, the elderly people, bring hands up, they will suck me, I won't go. Mm -hmm. But thanks be to God and the father of this house yeah. and our grandfather, Reverend Dr. Kojo Boateng mm -hmm. they took me in. They were paying my fees for me. They were feeding, I said, sometimes <laughs> this man will give me <laughs> this bottle of whipped cream just for me to look good on Christmas. Aww. He was giving me money for tithes, offering, everything. Amen. And at a point in time, I met people who were also supporting me through secondary school. I didn't have anybody. Some of them, you, they will even give you the money. You will call them later. You can't even get hold of them. And when I get the money, I was also giving it to other people who are also in need. Yeah. I was a fighter. I will go and fight. I fight for people for money. Sometimes I go to, I have begged before. Mm -hmm. I used to go to stores to beg for money, mm -hmm. to buy food. Mm -hmm. I am not ashamed to share my story. Can't be. No, I'm not ashamed of this because I don't know who is blessing some out there. Mm -hmm. I have begged money before. I go to stores to stores to sing. Sometimes church at the parking lot. As soon as they said, let's share the grace, I'm already outside. I'm looking for the big men and women who have the Porsche cars mm. just to go and tax them for money. Money. Oh, money. You know how to take them. I'm telling you. And you know, it's funny. I'll get a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But I'll be sharing some to friends. And the days that I don't have money, that I used to, uh, I have to bother transport, maybe I'll be at the back and be, the maids will be asking for them, money collector will be asking for money and I'll be looking through my bag. I know I don't have money. Right, right. And then I'll tell him, sometimes I'll sit in the car to the destination and then I'll tell the maids I don't have money. So how do I go back home? You've, you've come to the, the final destination, but I can't alight from the car. It's been a hectic road, but through it all, God saw me through. Amen. Through it all, God was my strength. Yes. He really kept me alive. Yeah. I remember I felt sick inside the house. Mm -hmm. I was very sick. I couldn't walk. I couldn't talk. Where I was laying down, I was pouring over there. I was peeing over there. Nobody wanted me, yeah. but God saw me through. I remember one day my pastor went with me to see my mom, just to ask her, what has she done yeah. that you treated her this way? Yeah. My mom served her so. I will go to church and I'll come back home and they will not give me food. So, uh, yeah, I used to bag my clothes in the paper bag and then go and sleep at the church. Mm. So, all that, I, let me summarize it and say that I am not better than you out there. Mm -hmm. Maybe your case is bigger than my case. Mm -hmm. But my slogan, because I was going through this, I, all that I, I remember that all that I used to say that Father, review my case, review my case and change the verdict. Mm. That was something that I used to confess. Yeah. Yeah. Let me be the Joseph of my family. Yeah. It, it was a confession. Yes. And people that I don't know, you know, the father of this house always says that the people you surround yourself with determines where you are going. Mm. And if you give the devil attention, he will give you direction. Yes. Love that one. Yes. So, and thanks be to God, I found myself at the right place at the right time. Amen. I met Papa Nikki when I was a child. I was growing up, I think at the age of 16, 17 years old. He's been a brother, he's been a father. Amen. That man is a no-nonsense man. He will tell you as it is. Yes. He will give it to you. Yeah. But he loves, because anybody that lacks rebuction is there's demon in you. Right. Because even Jesus disciplined the disciples. Yes. Yes. Not that he didn't love them. Mm -hmm. 
He loved. That is why he disciplined them. Was because he loved them. Because he loved them. Do you understand? So whatever you are going through out there, Mm -hmm. I thought I can never forgive my mom. I even sworn that Mm -hmm. I will never ever forgive her. And I went to her boldly and I asked her, are you sure you are the one that gave birth to me? Mm. Are you sh- very sure? Because sometimes I'll go and sell for my mom. I used to sell for her. And she would not even use that money to pay my fees. I have to go and cry on my grandma. Yeah. So at a point in time, I also took a strategy. Mm-hmm. If mama says that sell this thing for a dollar, I'll sell it a dollar and a 50 cent. That 50 cent is mine. Mm-hmm. So I'll be saving the 50 cents. Girl, look at those business yes. skills. Yes, and then at a point in time, I took all her customers from her. I was buying the things and I was selling it myself. Mm. Yes, I was, wow. nobody was buying from her and I wasn't selling from. I wasn't selling for her. I took that business from her and I was selling. I was getting, I was making money. I'll, I'll make my money, go and save at the end of the day, I'll come and sleep outside. Mm. Do you understand? So it, it, it was a tough journey. Mm-hmm. It was a tough journey, but I said, going about sleeping with sugar daddies, sleeping with men, mm-hmm. if you sleep with two different kind of men, do you know the kind of spirit you have contaminated right. into your body? Right. So you, you had that understanding, I think this mic is low, but you had that understanding at a very early age yes. that Spirituals that spirits are transferred through mm-hmm. sexual, mm-hmm. yes, mm-hmm. Se- mm-hmm. sexual mm-hmm. encounters. Mm-hmm. So, with that being said, like with your story, as far as your process of forgiveness, what was that healing journey like for you? Because when we have to go through that process, and this is something I want to say before I forget it too. Yes. Even though you forgive someone, there's still sometimes some residue left over. Oh, yes. So you can say, because, you know, for me, my dad had sexually abused me Mm -hmm. um, for years, and it was on my 10th birthday when I told my grandmother what was happening, Mm -hmm. because we all lived in the same house, and nothing happened. Mm -hmm. Like, she didn't call the police, like, nothing happened. Mm -hmm. But even at an early age, like, after I had left and I lived with my grandfather, I I always told myself, you know what, I forgive him, like, I don't have any bad blood. But there came a time when I had called him and I said, Dad, I forgive you. And he was like, all kind of nonchalant, right? He was like, oh, well, I appreciate that. And it wasn't the response that I was hoping for. And in that moment, I was hurt. Mm -hmm. So even though I had forgave him, I did not deal with the residue that was left over. Thank you. Because at that point, I was looking at all of the things that had happened through my life and what could have, you know, what had what that experience had caused me and how it shifted my mindset and how I walked through life. And, you know, when you come to knowing God's love and you start reading your Bible, you start seeing, oh my gosh, like, look what what I've done. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that word will start convicting you. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk about dealing with that residue because we're talking about the power of forgiveness, but we also need to talk about dealing with that residue that's left over. Like, yes, it's good that you forgave, but now you have to go through the process of healing oh, yeah. for that forgiveness to stick. Because if not, mm-hmm. there's going to be an encounter or some kind of something that comes up in your life. Yeah. And you're going to say, oh, well, you're going to look back at that situation that you, were, that you have already forgiven. And then that situation is oh, going to yeah. come back. And, you know, so sure. let's talk about that. You know, let me say this. I remember I thought I, I could never forgive my mom mm-hmm. because... I remember when my mom, grandmom died and we went for the funeral. Yeah. I told my mom, you everything you've done to me in the past, I forgive you, but you know, I need to get back to school. Mm. So I want to start business with you. Mm. When we get back to Accra, I want you to buy some stuff so that I will just trade, I will sell. Right, right. And then all she could tell me was that, I don't need your help. That's what my mom told me. It was 18th of March. Mm. Yes. Wow. 2006. Yeah. She said she doesn't need my help. Right. Then I said, okay. So I bought a car from the village mm-hmm. and they came to Accra. I slept outside for one year. Yes. Wow. 
my own family house. I slept outside for one year. Yeah, I'll go. And even when people give me money, some of my cousins, I come and then I share with them. And ever since growing up, any job that I apply, they don't ask me for CV. I have never gone for an interview for a job, but I get them. So I started working at a law firm. And then I, what happened to me, I think I sneezed. And then I passed out. Oh, wow. Yes. And then two days after, they called me and told me that my mom was admitted that same day I, I, I had that encounter mm -hmm. at the hospital. Wow. And then I'm like, I don't care. Mm. Even though I said I don't care, I'm like, she's a mom. Mm -hmm. You need to be there. So I was visiting in and out. I was taking communion to her every Sunday. They really took care of my mother. And at a point, I was looking at her. I said, you know what? God has given you another chance. Right. You could, because my mom was on test at the hospital. Wow. You see how when a car knocks a cat or a dog, the way they... Mm -hmm. Yes, that was how my mom was just on test. Even her black group, the blood that they had to give, they were not even getting it. Wow. Yes. But every Sunday, I'll rush to Kolebu mm. and then go and give her communion. Mm. So one of the nurses took care of her. My mom didn't pay for hospital bill. Mm -hmm. When she when they were, she was even discharged, they even gave her some money and stuff. Mm. Our um, introduction, I made mention of that. As of today, if I called them number, they said they don't have anybody by name, Miss mm -hmm. Benson. Mm -hmm. That was how I got to know that angels mm -hmm. work within us. Amen. I have forgiven my mother because I said to myself, even if I call somebody mom, it's not, it's not my mother. It's not, it's not the same. Mm -hmm. Even if my grandmom is not no more around, mm -hmm. I said I'm a Christian. I pray. I pay my tithe. If I have a hair in my heart, mm -hmm. then it means whatever I am doing, I'm not doing it right. right. Because even the Bible says that if you know you are not talking or you have a lot of head with your friend, go and amen before you come to my presence yeah. and give an offering. Yeah. So I went to her. I told her I love her. Mm -hmm. I love her as my mother, but whatever she has done, I can't forget about it. That night, 23rd of August, 2000, 2016, somebody gave me money, a huge sum of money, at the airport. All that I could hear behind my counter was that, take out your tithe and give the rest to your mom. Wow. I battled with it for two weeks. Because I wasn't releasing the money, and the money was in my account. I had already paid the tithes, though. But money wasn't coming to me. Mm -hmm. I, I, I money, but when I gave my mom that money, doors started opening. Wow. And when I left that family, you know, I went to write an exam in Kumasa. I came back, my auntie has packed all my things outside. Mm -hmm. So I was perching. Like, if you see somebody is perching, like, going to friend's house, and then... But the day I left that house, that was the day of my breakthrough. Amen. So sometimes you may be at one place. Yes. God will be saying, go here. You were like, no, I'm so comfortable here. Mm. You don't know what God has in store for you. You don't know. I have forgiven her. Mm -hmm. And I, had a heart, I have a heart of forgiveness. Yeah. I do. Same. I really have a heart of forgiveness. But sometimes people try to misuse us people try to use our leniency to be our weakness which is yes. very bad yes. do you understand mm -hmm. so if i come to church and i don't talk to you meaning i mean i'm an expert in the church because i am not i come to church but i am not doing what the word says i should do mm. so i have i said lord i let go i let go only you can take control. Yeah. So let go and let God. Yeah. I have let go of everything. 
I have forgiven my mother. Today, if I don't talk to my mother, I feel like I've lost something. And what was that point or that moment of let go? Because I told God to work on me. Amen. So that even though I have forgiven her, I will love her mm -hmm. as a mother. Yes. I will cherish her as a mother. You know, I will look up to her mm -hmm. because the mistakes that she did, I don't want to repeat that mistake. Right. Like my family, you give birth before you get married. Mm -hmm. But me, I said, no. <laughs> Though it may tell me, but yes, still, the mission will be accomplished. Amen. I will not give birth before I get married. Mm -hmm. My mother gave birth to me out of wedlock. Okay. I can't do that. Yeah. With God on my side and with the help of this house, yes. I will make it. And I am making it. Yes. I, I am, God has been faithful. Amen. Because he did not bring me this far to leave me. Yes. And now my test is my testimony. Amen. And as you always said, your mess yes. has become your message. Yes. Yes. So no matter what you are going through out there, let Christ be your focus. Let Christ direct you in everything that you do. Men will deceive you. Mm. If you put your hope and your trust in man, hey, they will be sleeping with you. They will be and the young women out there. Let us use our hands for just your hands to do something. Productive. Yes, try to engage yourself in certain things that will yield something to you. Mm -hmm. Because you have the mentality that, oh, um, maybe Kofi's father is giving me 200 every week. Mm -hmm. Because you did not work for it, you misuse the money. Are you going to take tithe out of that money? Right. And give it it's, a, it's even an insult right. to yeah, God. I say that's a slap in his face. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the young girls out there, I am not better than you. Yes. It is great that has found me. Amen. But I'm here to encourage you. Yes. Do something with your fingers. Do something with your... If you have a, if you think you, you know how to breathe, Engage yourself, learn, learn trade. I was selling pure water, I was selling ice water, I was I was selling in the street. When you give me money, I will make sure I sell and make something out of that money. Yeah. Do you understand? Because how long are you gonna sleep with men? Right. How long are you gonna chase people's husbands? Mm. Because at the end of the day, when he's lying beside you and the wife calls, babe, babe, please, our son is the temperature is he will leave you exactly. and attend to the wife. Exactly. So why are you wasting your time? Yes. Go down on your knees mm -hmm. and thank God for the mess. Yes. Thank God for the situation that you are in. Once you are thanking him, he will help you to clean up those messes. Amen. What do you have to say, yes. my sister? That is such a powerful word because, oh my Lord, okay, yes. So I'm trying to even figure out where to start. <laughs> start wherever you want to start. So, yeah, be productive. I mean, whatever you're going through right now, whether you're younger, whether you're older, oh, yeah. find something to do because when you, there was a saying when I was growing up that said, fast money, if you get fast money, it, it, it leaves you fast. Yeah. So anything that you get on, that, that you didn't get it in a good way, is it's not gonna stick it's not gonna hold so it's important for younger people even for older people who whatever stage of life you are in you know to find something that can that god can use in you mm -hmm. whether it's braiding hair whether it's cooking whether it's sewing, sewing whether whatever it is do it. do it learn a skill learn a trade yes you know, sleeping around with different men. And that's a part of my message too, to young ladies especially, because I know what it what it's like when you're trying to have money in your pocket, mm. but you don't have to resort to selling your body or selling your soul. You. you know, growing up, I pretty much had to fend for myself. Mm. I was a waitress and I also was a delivery girl. And at one point I was working two jobs while running track and going to school. Mm -hmm. So there is always a way to get what you need and you don't have to sacrifice who you are mm -hmm. in order to get that. 
And then when you start sleep, if you start sleeping around, first of all, nothing good is going to come from that. Totally. For one, the memories, those aren't going to be good memories mm. in your mind. Mm. It's, it's not going to be a good part of your story that you like to look on. Mm. Now, yes, God can mm. redeem the time. Yes, yeah. he can make your mess your message. Mm -hmm. But if you can avoid doing something, living a certain lifestyle, then avoid it. Mm -hmm. Avoid it. Yeah. Cut yourself the heartache mm -hmm. and avoid it. And let me say something. That sleeping around is not even only women that does that. Oh, no. We have young men yeah. who can use their hands to work, yeah. but they want to follow only women mm. because they want quick money. So I want somebody who is 15 years older than me. I want somebody who, no. Sugar mama. Sugar mama. <laughs> sleeping with that sugar mama, you, you are wasting your life. Yeah. You are destroying your own self. Yes. Why can't you do something as, as, a, as a youth, as a young girl, a young guy coming up, yeah. doing Yahoo, stealing from the internet, sleeping with dogs? It, it, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. You know, and nobody is judging anybody. Nobody is condemning anybody. Life is a choice. Mm -hmm. But... How do you make your choice? Amen. How do you make your choice? How do you make your choice in life? Amen. It's about time that we, the youth that are coming up, we should use our energy, our talent to do something for Christ. Yeah. Because if you read, um, I've forgotten that quotation. Holy Spirit will bring it back. Amen. If you do it with all your might and diligently, yeah. God will honor you. Amen. God will honor you. And if you are doing it today, you have to stop. Stop it. You have to stop. Yeah. Because God himself will bring you your partner. God himself will bring you that destiny helpers you are looking for. And somebody will just help you, take you in. I remember there was this one man who was willing to help me pay my fees. But he asked me to come to his office. Wow. And then I went to the office. When I got, I was, that day I was very ready. Even my, my slippers was, my flip flop was even torn. Wow. But he was not looking at the wretchedness. Mm -hmm. He was looking at my figure. Mm -hmm. After giving him the money, he was like, can I kiss you? Mm -hmm. I said, you want to kiss me? Mm -hmm. Is that the reason why you brought me here? Do you want to do this with me before you pay my fees or what? Mm -hmm. But thank be to God. A client walked in, so I was able to go with the money. And thank God I received the money before that thing happened. Sometimes it is not us. Mm -hmm. Mistakes are always born to happen. That is why the Bible also says that we should flee. Mm -hmm. We should stick to our heels yeah. and run. Yeah. And run. The way the world is going, please let us give our all to Christ. Right. Because that mouth you are using to flatter men, mm -hmm. you are using to flatter sugar women, you can use that mouth to win souls to Christ. Mm -hmm. You can even use that mouth to do something, to, you know, go, go to where maybe they do books, like stationaries, do binding. Even if a day you are getting a dollar, even if a day they are giving you even $10 or 10 Ghana cities, mm -hmm. save five cities, and at the end of the year, you'll get something. Right. I have been there before, mm -hmm. and I am not ashamed to tell you that where you are is going to destroy you. Mm -hmm. As for me, I was lucky that grace found me. Yes. Maybe grace will not find you. You will die in it. Mm. So why don't you pursue yeah. and ask God to show you mercy? Yeah. Ask God to give you a new life. I don't want to tear up. Oh, no. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So... Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. If you're living a lifestyle that is out of what God, out of the will of what God would want you to do, mm. you know, again, this, this whole message was about the power of forgiveness. forgiveness. Yeah. And sometimes what happens is that we get into a way where, un where unforgiveness starts leading us to different lifestyles. Yeah where unforgiveness starts causing us to look at ourselves differently. And because we haven't forgiven the situation, because we haven't forgiven ourselves, sometimes we feel like we are the reasons why we got in that situation. 
And that unforgiveness then leads you to unrepentance. Mm -hmm. So now here you are with an unforgiven heart, whether it be towards yourself or to someone else. Well, first of all, you can't forgive yourself until you forgive the other person anyways, because you have to release them. Mm -hmm. And as you release them, you have to release yourself and say, you know what? I'm breaking the ties mm -hmm. of the situation. Oh, yes. I'm no longer tied to you. I no longer am tied to you in my mind. I'm no longer tied to you in my body. You have to start breaking those ties. Mm -hmm. So if you're living in a way that, you know, where you're, you're selling your body or you're sleeping around or whatever it is, just know that, yes, grace may not find you right now oh, yes. because tomorrow's not promised. Mm. And again, like we're not judging anyone because me, myself, and I, I have a different story from Abel. Oh, yeah. I did a lot of things that I am definitely not proud of. Mm -hmm. A lot of them. But at the same time, God still was with me because I would be in my room reading my Bible. I would be in my room. Yes, I would be in my room crying out to the Lord saying, you know what, God, like, I need you. And he found me. Because you didn't want to do it no more. A amen. So you have to want to change. See, sometimes people don't want to change. They say, well, I can get on the internet and I can, I can sleep around and I can sell my body. I was having a conversation with someone and I said, you don't have to do that to yourself. Like, think about what you're doing to yourself. Think about what your kids may see. Think about what other people, you know, and it's not even, even what other people are going to say about you, but how you're putting yourself out there. You don't have to be on the internet having sex or, or showing your body all off. Like, you are so precious to God. You are so precious. And when you don't honor this body as the temple of God, you will reap those consequences. It's true. So today, again, the message was all about forgiveness. Because we want you to understand that as you forgive other people and you release them, you release the situations that you've gone through, you release that from your mind, you release it from your heart, you release it from your spirit, you will start seeing breakthrough happen. Yeah. You will start seeing doors open. You will start seeing God work boldly in your favor. You will start seeing the grace of God come into your life like never before. But you have to start forgiving. You have to let go and let God. So we're going to close out with a powerful prayer because we want to pray for you. We want to pray with you. We love you. We're, you know, this women on the front line is all love. It's, it's all love. It's all love. It's love. <laughs> but there is a story behind each and every one of our glories. Oh, yeah. And there is a mess message in our from our oh, mess. Yeah. yeah. So Mabel's going to close us out in prayer. And we thank you for tuning in. You can catch this video on YouTube. Share with your friends as well. But we're going to pray you out really quick. You are the fire in me. You are the power that works in me. You are my ever-present helper. Holy Spirit, I adore. Precious Holy Ghost, I worship you. I worship you. Precious Holy Ghost, come take your place. Let it be as gold and precious silver. Purify my heart. Let it be as gold and precious silver. Refine as fire. My heart.
for you, my master, ready to do your will. Father, we are ready to do your will. Father, refine us again, oh God. Father, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for the strength. We thank you for the life of our viewers. We thank you, Lord, for the We thank you for the job that you have given unto us, oh God. Father, we bless your name. Let the words of our mouth, oh God, and let the meditations, Lord, of our hearts, let it be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we thank you, Father, for each and every listener that has listened tonight, God. We pray, Lord, over their ears, God, that they have ears to hear, God. That they didn't just hear the message, but they, that they actually listened. Because sometimes we can hear, but we're not actually listening. So, Father, we ask that what was being said was being listened to and not just heard, God. But we also ask, God, that as they listen to this message, Lord, that they will, that they will turn from their wicked ways, that they will learn the, the value of repentance. God, that anyone who has been living a wayward life, God, that today they will come to you and surrender the life to you, God, that they will say, I no longer want to displease. I no longer want to abuse the hope the, this temple because God, you said that your Holy Spirit lives in our temple and that we are the temple of God. So Father, we thank you, Father, for each and every listener, God, that as they heard this message, God, whether it be um, repentance for for unforgiveness, repentance for anger, repentance for bitterness. Lord, just let them come to a place of repentance, God, because we each and every one of us need to repent of our ways on a daily basis. So, Father, I ask, Lord, that you even reveal to them their heart, God, because you look at our hearts, Lord. So we ask, Lord, that you reveal to them their heart, Father, and that you show what needs to be healed, what needs to be forgiven, what needs to be released. So, God, that you can work mightily and wonderfully in their lives, God, but you can't do that if there are walls that are being built up. So, God, we come against each and every wall of unforgiveness, each and every wall that is burdening your people, each and every wall that is trying to take your people to hell. Lord, it is not your will for us to go to hell. But you have given us life and life abundantly. Oh, yes, so, Father, we thank you, God, that as they heard this word, God, that their lives will be transformed, God. Because we're not just up here speaking about our testimonies or about our stories. It's not just about our mere stories, but it's about the power of your word that has worked through yes, our lives, Lord. God. The power of you that has transformed our lives, God. From a wayward life or from a life of, of unforgiveness or stubbornness or whatever it may have been. But, Lord, you have shifted us and you have changed us you have molded us into someone into women Amen. who are of valor women who are on the front line women who have glory behind their story Jesus. because not every story has glory mm. so god we ask lord that as you continue to glorify yourself through us lord that each person and that is tuning in that you will also glorify yourself in their life because at the end of our lives, Lord, we want you to get all the glory. Yes, Lord. You will get all the glory. Yes, Lord. So we honor you, God. Amen. We thank you, Father, that this word reaches exactly who it needs to reach. Amen. And that today, forgiveness will spring forth. Oh, yeah. And because of that, Lord, we thank you. Amen. We thank you, Father. Amen. We thank you that they are released yes, from unforgiveness. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. All right, we will see y'all again. God bless you, sis. We will bless see y'all again. <laughs> we will see y'all again on the next Facebook Live. I'm sure we're going to come back next Monday. Yes. Um, we don't have a solidified time yet, yes. yet, but you can more than likely expect it again on Monday. Um, we also will have these videos posted on YouTube, YouTube at Christian Classy Confidence. Yeah. So please do subscribe. subscribe, show some support. And it share. is a ministry and based share. channel. Share, 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 share. 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 Love like. you. Bye. Love you. Bye.